So this question is asking for the inverse Fourier transform. It's asking for a time domain function, the spectrum of which is given in the question. So we look at the, um, the, four, the frequency domain function we're given, and it's very similar to the given pair, the pair that's given in the question. But we notice that a very important difference is we have this power 2. So we have the signal squared. Now remember, squaring a signal is simply multiplying it by itself. So it's something like 1 plus j omega multiplied by 1 over 1 plus j omega. So the question now is, what is the inverse Fourier transform of that? Now remember the convolution property of the Fourier transform. It says when you multiply in the frequency domain, the equivalent operation in the time domain is a convolution. So if we look back at the pair, the Fourier pair we have, it looks very similar, but that A we can replace with a number 1. So we can do that, so that would be a, a 1 here, and the time domain function would therefore be e to the minus t u of t convolved with itself. Now, we try our best to avoid carrying out convolution integrals, but in this case we're going to take the plunge and carry out the convolution integral. Now, it's nothing to be afraid of. We simply apply the definition of convolution, which is the integral from minus infinity to infinity. The first function, let's call it um, x, will be x of tau multiplied by y of t minus tau D tau. That's the definition. Okay, so now we simply replace um, x and y with our two functions. So we have e to the power minus tau times u of tau multiplied by e to the power minus t minus tau multiplied by u of t minus tau. Now we're integrating over tau and not time. So watch out for that. Now that looks like a, a huge integration but actually we have these two unit steps. And a unit step, remember, what it does is it changes the limits for our integration. So if we just make a little bit of space here, the first unit step is simply that. So it's 1 from 0. And the second unit step, if you remember, is um, a reflected unit step until tau equals t. Remember, the variable here, the independent variable, is tau. It's not t. It's tau. So when you multiply the two together, the effect this will have is it will change these two limits. So our integration now becomes from 0 to t. And then you're simply multiplying 1 by 1. So that's 1, and that's 1. So you simply multiplying 1 by 1. So you end up with e to the minus tau multiplied by e to the minus t minus tau d tau. So notice how I replaced the limits from minus infinity to infinity and they became 0 to t. Now if you simply add the powers have e to the minus tau minus t plus tau 
detail. Now, these conveniently add up to zero. So we're now integrating from zero to t, e to the minus dt, d tau. Now remember, we're actually integrating over tau. So the variable t is actually a constant. So we can actually take the t outside, sorry, the e to the power um, minus t outside the integral. So we're actually just integrating 1 d tau from 0 to t. And that's simply t, isn't it? That's it. It's e to the minus t times t from 0 to t. Now remember, this only applies when t is greater than 0. So that's, that's our condition here. T has to be greater than zero, because if T is less than zero, then um, there's nothing to integrate. So the final step is to substitute the limits. So we have E to the minus T times T. And because we have this condition, t greater than 0, we express that mathematically by saying u of t. Now we have this product t u of t, which we can leave inside the answer, or we could write it as a ramp function. So either Either, either responses are okay. So you could, you could use the ramp function or you could say t times a unit step. So that's your final answer.